Okay, so now we continue with the uh, the tri-state register role in inputting data. And as I said, uh, between ports uh, and the tri-state buffers, um, they work hand in hand in making sure that the data is where it belongs. So to make a port, an input port, we must first put ones into the tri-state, whichever buffer you're looking at or register, for that port, and then bring in or read the data present at the pins. Notice that zero stands for out and one stands for in. This is easy to remember because an O and a zero look alike the same way that an I and looks like a one. The following code will get the data present at the pins of port C and send it to port B indefinitely after adding the value of five to it. So you can see here that we've moved, there's our literal value into the working register. All of these zeros are telling us in the comments. And again, it's a good idea to tell yourself what you've done here, uh, a binary. And then we've moved from the working register to some file. Well, that files the tri-state B. Port B, an output port 0 or O. Okay, so they're just telling you. And then we're going to, again, move a literal value into the working register for uh, a binary. All those ones, and they show it over here in the comment. The next step then, move to the working register, from the working register to a file, tri-state C, port C, and input port 1 or an I, and then we're going to do a move F, move a file, from port C to the working registry. Okay, so you don't forget, you've got all your syntax here you've got to keep track of when you're using MPLAB. So port C, comma, W moves the data from port C to the working register. Then we're going to add a literal value to the working register, a value of 5, add some value to it, move the working register F to port B, send the value then to port B, and then we start having it go back and forth, go to L2. L2 then is this line having you repeat that forever. The next step they say is a more efficient version of doing this, um, where this program is as follows. In this case, we're going to do a clear of a register. So we're going to clear the tri-state B, clear it, port B then on an output port. Then we're going to set a value for the register F, tri-state C. Set tri-state C, port C, and input make it an input port, then move to a file, port C, working register, get data from port C, and now we're going to do an operator here, add a literal value to the working register 5, so we add that value, and then move from the working register to a file, port B, send the value to port B. Okay, and then we're going to branch here is what this is telling us, branch L2. Okay, So L2 then is our loop, and we we'll just go back and forth and back and forth. Okay, So you need to be getting used to um, these commands, and as I said before, keep track of them. I hope you're using a, uh, keeping a, uh, a binder of some sort, a three-ring binder, where you are keeping track of all of these commands and how to use them. Otherwise, if you don't use them, you're not going to learn how to do it. So, tri-state register role inputting data. So again, it must be noted that unless we activate the tri-state buffer bits by putting ones in there, the data will not be brought into the working register from the pins of, in this case, port C. To see the role of the tri-state, whatever value register in allowing the data to come into the CPU from the pins, um, you can take a look at, again, the schematic diagrams or the logic diagrams, if you will, uh, 4.5 and 4.6. 
for inputting or reading zero from a pin in the pick 18. Okay, so take a look at that. Prove to yourself that from an input value here uh, of a zero to um, a zero here. Okay, so in the next one, then reading a one to a pin in the pick 18. Okay, so both of those um, diagrams uh, give you some idea um, schematically uh, or logic diagram schematically um, of what's going on uh, when you are making a port an in, uh, an in or an out. So let's take a look at um, uh, an example here, port A. Port A occupies, occupies a total of seven pins. And if we were to look back at our diagram, um, A RA0 to RA6, but for the pick 18 F458, pin A6 is used for the oscillator 2 pin. Okay, A6 is not available if we use a crystal oscillator to provide frequency to the pick um, to the pick 18 chip, uh, which we will learn later uh, in chapter 8. To use the pins of port A as both the input and output ports, each bit must be connected externally to the pin by enabling the bits of the tri-state A register. For example, the following code will continuously send out to port A alternating values of 55H and AAH. So there's the code for that An example piece of code. If we take a look at it, you know, again, you should be becoming familiar with what these commands are telling you, moving a literal and then moving it from the working register to a file. In this case, a register file, in this case, the tri-state A. Moving a literal, in this case, 55H, moving it from the working register to port A. So by the time we get down to this step, we've put 55H on port A's pins. We put a little delay in here, like I said, so that you can either see it or to allow a time, uh, a little time to, to elapse. Then moving a literal, again, AA to the working register, moving that value then to port A, that F designating that. So putting AH on port A pins, another short delay, and then throw it into a loop. So it's continuously going 55AH, 55AH. It must be noted that 55H in binary 01010101101 when complemented becomes AAH, 10101010. How convenient. Although by sending a 55 hex and an AAH to port A continuously, we toggle all bits of the port A register only pins RA0 to RA5 will show the toggling data. And again, this is where you need to know and be using in MP Lab when you put this code in and watch it, how to look at what's going on in that looping by checking out the watch window. If you set up the watch window correctly, you'll be able to see the tri-state A and port A changing states as 55H or AAH and verify that uh, what you programmed is in fact happening. So let's take a look at um, port A as an input. So in order to make all the bits of port A an input, tri-state A must be programmed by writing ones to all the bits. So in the following code, port A is configured first as an input port by writing all ones to register tri-state A, and then data is received from port A and saved to some RAM location of the file register. Okay, so if you take a look at this, going through each step, um, we've got uh, an, an equate here of 20 being saved and then we're moving 
the literal values of all ones to the working register and then we are putting port A on an input port of one or in. And then we do a move file port A to the, reg to the working register and then move file uh, uh, working register file my register that you've named um, 0 to 0 as the file register name for my reg. So there is a quick um, example of how to do this um, input designating uh, and looking at the outputs uh, on port A in each case. As you go through this, um, you can see the same type of operation for port B. Go ahead and read through it. Make sure you understand the code. Port B as an input. Okay, A dual role of ports A and B. The PIC18 multiplexes an analog to digital converter through port A to save uh, any I.O. pins. So where many problem projects use an analog to digital converter, uh, we can see here um, that port, uh, port by port, A, RA0 to RA6, RB0 to RB7, um, we can see what each bit will do and what the function of each is. So the PIC18 multiplexes an analog to digital converter through port A to the saved IO ports. Okay, so take a look at that uh, and see how you can make a dual role A and B. Port C, same type of operation. Take a look at that code, make sure you understand it. Port C is an input, the same thing we saw with port A. And then port D, we look at the same thing uh, by port D operation here. You know the idea of this here is to make you familiar with each of the ports available uh, on the PIC 18. Okay so in this case um, they again use the my register um, example. Doing the same thing on the dual role of points ports C and D. Again you can see that each of the ports RC0 to RC7 and RD0 to RD7, um, you can see what the uh, what the function is for each of those ports in the PIC-18. Okay, port E, uh, if we take a look at uh, port E, it occupies a total of three pins. Where the others had six or seven, it only has three pins. Uh, and again, we're referencing what the textbook says, for the 18F458. Port E is used for three additional analog inputs or simple I.O. and AN5, AN6, and 7 um, are those ports. Port E also has alternate functions. If you look in the back of your book, um, e there is descriptions um, for each of the ports that you can refer to uh, without having to dig around in your text constantly. Okay. So your textbook has several examples, um, different ways of accessing uh, different, uh, the entire eight bits here. Uh, and we'll come back and take a look at what some of these examples look like.